What's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Monday, April 17th, 2023. I'm your host, Joe from the Buckeye Cast. In birthday month, <clears throat> had a lovely birthday yesterday. Uh, Jeff and Sean didn't help matters, but they tried. Not really. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, good job, guys. Uh, if it's a Monday, we're bringing back recruiting Mondays. Uh, we pushed it back to Tuesday last week, but back to Monday. We had a ton of visitors over the weekend for the spring game. So we're going to run through everything that went down in the recruiting front, um, who showed up, who did not, who committed, uh, things like that. So let's hop into it. Got a bit to run through. So start off with the cherry on top. Um, I know it's kind of backwards, but uh, Buckeyes land two commits. They got the top 15 tight end in the country, Max LeBlanc out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, by way of Montreal. Um, also got running back and athlete uh, Sam Williams-Dixon, uh, sorely, sorely underrated running back. Um, uh, things are going to change over his uh, next next nine months, I imagine, uh, on his rankings. So, so that brings the Buckeyes to, I go by rankings, you guys know me, rankings average per player. So average per player ranking composite, Georgia has 12 commits. They're at a 94.6. This shocked the hell out of me when I was looking at the rankings. Florida is tied with Georgia with only seven recruits. Give you that. But they're at a 94.6 as well. So those two are leading the country in ranking per player. Buckeyes are third. Uh, they have 12 commits at a 93.36, so not too far away, but an uh, interesting difference there. Um, we'll see if Florida can maintain that that uh, recruiting push, I guess. Um, so who visited Saturday? We had a couple surprises. Um, kind of good news, bad news here. I uh, can't give you all the bad news first. We're just going to kind of go back and forth, so kind of ping-pong your way through this. Um uh, 2024 four-star quarterback Aaron Nolan was back for the spring game. It wasn't, it was uh, kind of a surprise. We weren't quite sure if he's going to make it. So he did great to see him on campus, uh, hanging out with the guys, his first, first visit as a Buckeye commit. So probably doing a little recruiting there himself. Uh, I would hope, um, receivers, Jeremiah Smith did make it out of the, uh, shark infested waters of Fort Lauderdale uh, on his street, but Jojo trader, his teammate did not make it. He went to the Miami spring game Friday night. So that's, I think that tells you a lot in my opinion. Um, I wouldn't expect him. He'll probably try and come on uh, an official because it's paid for, but I wouldn't expect uh, a serious effort out of that, out of Jojo trader. So it's fine. No big deal. Uh, keep it moving. Uh, another guy that did not show is 2024 Mississippi defensive end Kamarion Franklin uh, did not make the trip. He went to Tennessee instead. So kind of tells you where his priorities lie as well. Um, another guy that did not make it. Uh, it. The news gets better. Trust me. PC. I know you always like the bad news first. Sorry. I had to kind of go back and forth here, but uh, we will get to some good news. I promise. Uh, Demarion Witten, a tight end from Cleveland Glenville did not make the trip down the two hour drive from Cleveland to Columbus. Um, he was actually on commitment watch commitment alert this weekend. Uh, so not sure what stands, what's going on there. Um, obviously we got the commitment from Max LeBlanc at tight end in this class. Uh, but everybody knows we want to sign two and uh, other schools now are going to go, you know, ramp up their efforts and use the LeBlanc commitment against Ohio State with Witten. So uh, Witten is aware that the Buckeyes are going to bring in two tight ends. Um, and after LeBlanc committed, uh, we had a quote here from uh, Demarion Witten. He said, it doesn't change anything. I have to compete wherever I go. It's just motivation to go harder. Okay. So we know those Glenville guys, they like to, to linger out there for a while and, and uh, you might mess around and miss your spot. So uh, let's talk about Booker Pickett, the defensive end from uh, Tampa. And uh, he, um, he was in town, so he did make that trip. So it's good news there. All right. Let's start, start at square one. Um, 
he had a quote here. He said he's an edge rusher, by the way. Um, means a lot to me. Uh, this visit means a lot to me because I'm narrow, narrowing down schools. I just really like the whole vibe and culture that's built around Ohio State. It's amazing. Uh, remember, he's uh, Ryan Pickett's uh, nephew. He's 6'5", 200 pounds. So picture that, 6'5", 200 pounds. Uh, so he's he's got the length. You know, I'm a huge length guy always, but he doesn't have the poundage. You got to have some poundage to go with that length. Otherwise, you're just, you know, a, a twig out there. Um, so he, he has the burst because he's so, you know, so skinny to to get after the quarterback. But he's unique and it, it's it. It's not really clear where he projects at college, at the college level, at only 200 pounds. So you could keep him at an outside linebacker, kind of, but he doesn't do a lot of run stuffing and pass coverage right now in, in high school. So, you know, he's got a relentless pass, pass rusher motor, but it's going to take some time to add the weight that he's going to need to go up against high level, you know, even Big Ten low level <laughs> offensive tackles. You know, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how his next year plays out and and his senior year. Maybe he can slam a, a bunch of weight on him this summer and, and into the fall and get him up to 230, 240. I don't know. Then when he gets into Columbus, should he go to Ohio State? You know, you can get him up to 250, 260. I don't know. That, that seems like a lot of weight in a short time period. But they'll probably get him for an official visit in June. Uh, like most of the big guys are coming in. The big guns are coming in the middle of June. Uh, Buckeyes are still considered one of the real favorites for him. So hopefully it would be great to, to keep the legacy rolling. But we'll see how that plays out. Uh, with the, the commitment – of uh, Sam Williams Dixon, let's talk about running back recruiting. Buckeyes are still very interested in a few other guys. So, again, they're they're probably going to bring in three running backs. And, and keep in mind, Sam Williams Dixon is more of an athlete, uh, H back. You know, he plays a lot of receiver. Played a lot of receiver at Millersburg. Now he's going to pick North. Let's see how they use him. So the Buckeyes are still in on uh, Florida running back Jordan Lyle. Uh, also Baltimore running back, Dewan Williams. He's visited twice in the last three weeks. Keep that in mind. And then uh, high four-star Taylor Tatum. Uh, he He's going to visit this coming weekend, uh, the 21st to the 23rd. So um, kind of missing the spring game, but at least he's making it to campus. And he, like I said, high four-star. Keep that in mind. I believe he's from Texas. Um, and then <clears throat> you got the Florida uh, commit running back Chauncey Bowen, Chauncey, Chauncey, Chauncey Bowens also. So still in on some guys, not letting up. Uh, we're not shutting down the running back recruiting yet. Um, let's talk uh, top four. We got a top four from Chucky Three Sticks, my guy, Charles Lester the third down in Sarasota. Uh, he named off uh, three that you'd assume and one that you wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> tell me which one doesn't sound like the others. Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Florida State. That pause was for effect. Um, so he is a noted homebody, and he's well aware of that. So maybe Florida State is the uh, lean right there. Uh, I have to check the crystal ball updates on him. So uh, while we're talking crystal ball updates, I got a bunch for you. A bunch rolled in this past week, and we've, we've got a lot of dudes on commitment watch, honestly, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, by the way, why do we need why we took two more offensive players this weekend? Frustrating. Anyways, got to take them. I know we need them. Um, first crystal ball, Aaron Scott. He has three predictions, all for the Buckeyes out of Springfield. Next, uh, Damarian Witten, the guy we just talked about, didn't make the trip. Now, people might want to start deleting these. <laughs> Uh, crystal balls uh, but we did just get one this past week so uh we'll still have three for demarion to the buckeyes we'll see how that plays out um now this guy is interesting uh he's unranked he's a tight end six one and a half 235 out of georgia um he's a class of 2025 so i know i usually don't talk about those guys but uh he's already got two crystal balls to ohio state as an unranked player in the 25 class so buckeyes are in on him obviously keenan bailey that that's his guy so that's his area too uh, so we have this this is awesome uh bryce west the corner the other corner 
strong Buck Eileen has seven crystal balls now to Ohio State. So just a matter of time, man. Uh, my guy Reggie Powers, the three-star safety, um, he has four crystal balls right now to the Buckeyes, just waiting on him to pull the trigger, I guess. You know you know how it got away for a designer to make that graphic, right? Those awesome graphics with all those trophies and shit. So uh, who else? Miles Lockhart, another uh, prediction uh, wait or a uh, commitment waiting to happen. Uh, just, you know, these guys are all going to pop on the same day, all three corners. Uh, Miles is more of a slot corner. He's at 5'10", so uh, out of Chandler, Arizona. Keep him in mind. Uh, he's got three crystal balls right now. And so I am ha- I am very happy to see all these crystal balls for these defensive guys, but really got to work on that D-line. And Anyway, um, last guy, Jeremiah McClellan, receiver out of St. Louis. Uh, he has two crystal balls in for the Buckeyes so far. So we'll see how it plays out. You don't know what can happen with these guys. But one thing I did want to mention, the portal opens Saturday, the 15th, opens through April 30th. Buckeyes are going to go in there heavy, looking for some tackles and some D tackles, offensive tackles, defensive tackles. And don't be surprised if you see some current Buckeyes hop in there this coming week. So um, this is the uncomfortable conversation week the position coaches have with their players. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep it locked in here. I'll keep you updated on all things, especially the uh, the roster changes and things like that and recruiting. So appreciate you guys. Please like and subscribe. Talk to you tomorrow. Go Bucks.